This video will look at paper two, question five, persuasing, persuasive writing. It's 40 marks, 45 minutes, the last question of GCSE. And it's making sure that you go out uh, very confidently, make sure you argue your points with maturity and with clarity and to be convincing in your argument and to write with good use of formal English language. So your question will be linked to the insert, whatever your question will be will have or take inspiration from what came before in the paper. So there will be evidence of things that have come before that you'll be able to use in this question, as well as your own opinion. Uh, so for instance, for this one, cars are noisy, dirty, smelly, and downright dangerous. They should be banned from all town and city centers, allowing people to walk and cycle and you know, in peace. That's because this was about this uh, extract was about the, the dangers of cycling on the roads. So of course, the, the, there are evidence um, in the inserts that you can take into your writing. So you don't need a pure amount of imagination here. You can take what's come before as well as base it on personal experience. The first thing to do is to recognize the what and the how. What am I writing about and how do they want me to write it? What they want you to write about will be the, the initial statement, the controversial statement. And then how do they want you to write it will be that third or fourth word in, word into the statement. So write a letter, write a speech, write an article. If it's a letter, make sure you get your layout correct with a date and address, dear sir, madam, or address it to someone specifically, such as the Minister for Transport in this occasion. Do your paragraphs as normal and then yours sincerely, uh, yours faithfully at the end with your name. If it's a speech, write it like you're saying it out loud. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to my speech today on, and then incorporate the question into your introduction. If it's um, a let, excuse me, an article, or if it's um, a leaflet or a pamphlet or an essay, then all you need to do is put a headline in or a title and then do your paragraphs as normal. So identify the what and the how, and then you're ready to start planning your response. And you should never start writing in question fives without planning first. Not only is it recommended, it's really, really hard to hit all of your marks again without doing so. So it's a good idea that you take this occasion to identify the what am I writing about, the how am I writing about it, then you can start planning how you're going to address this question. The other thing to look for is that most of the content for your answer, potentially, is already in the question. A lot of the um, elements that you could incorporate into your answer will already be keywords in the question. If you can identify those keywords, you can start using those actual words in your answer to show you're linking back to the question throughout. So if we look at this one, cars are noisy, dirty, smelly, and downright dangerous. Well, there's four paragraphs potentially already. Noisy, dirty, smelly, down and dangerous. They should be banned from all town and city sentence is the, is the content of your argument. And um, allowing people to walk and cycle in peace. Walk and cycle in peace. There's two other paragraphs there as well. Um, we're looking for a mature, convincing argument. Two to three sides of writing. It's not about writing a lot. It's always about writing well and hitting your mark scheme. Now, your question will always be followed by your mark scheme. So in this one, 24 marks for content and organization. Content is your argument, organization is your structure, and then 16 marks for technical accuracy, that's your spelling, punctuation, and grammar. So you need to make sure you plan for your mark scheme. So the first thing you should be looking for is the content. What am I writing about? Is it convincing? Which is my level four mark. And then organization, how have I structured my argument accurately and coherently using a good use of discourse markers? So it's consistent and clear, and I'm always referring back to the question. And then when you're ready to write it and you are writing it, have you used technical accuracy, a good use of spelling, punctuation, grammar, and formal language, which we'll come back to the mark scheme in a slightly uh, bit more depth in a minute. So break the question down for content. Think about for and against. Come up with both so that you can decide which side of the fence you want to argue from. Once you've got a good, mature, convincing amount of content, which is with depth, and you've explored why those things are important, you can look at organization. And if we look at a potential structure for you here that you could use if you wish into your response, we're looking at making sure that you've understood that one thing will lead specifically onto the next. So in your introduction, state your opinion. Are you for or against? And then repeat the question to show that you're linking back to the question. In the content, of your argument, your paragraphs. Use discourse markers to link them, firstly, secondly, thirdly. And inside your paragraphs, use linking words, discourse markers as well. Therefore, whereas, however, and but because, 
these linking words will show the, con the, the consistency and the coherence, the understandability of your argument. You haven't rambled, you haven't gone off track. Everything is linked and everything is linked to the question. You can bring in a counter argument as well to show the depth and maturity and breadth of your argument. So you could say, however, there are also bad things about this argument. So again, however, will show a shift of tone moving into a counter argument as well. You might summarize your argument uh, going back to your main points, and then you should have a conclusion as well. And there's no reason to not use the words or the phrase in conclusion as a discourse marker to start that final paragraph and go back to the beginning, restate your opinion, repeat the question again to show that everything is linked back to the actual question that you've been asked. In terms of our mark scheme then, to be level three, you've got to be consistent and clear all the way through. It's consistently clear. You haven't waffled, you haven't gone off track as we said, and you can do that if you plan your response carefully. Think about the tone. Are you enthusiastic, maybe ironic? Maybe um, you're um, being really passionate. As long as you're being convincing, all those things count. In terms of increasingly sophisticated voc vocabulary and phrasing, think about how you are expressing yourself. Okay, and then we can look at your spag mark in a second to go along with that. Effective use of structural features. So you may use um, anecdotes, you may use De Forest or Fat Horse, and those persuasive features. Um, those features are brilliant to use. They're not on your mark scheme but they will help anchor your response if you use them convincingly, so there's no reason not to. Um, writing is engaging. You are clear and passionate, and you've got connected ideas throughout your argument with coherent paragraphs. Your, your paragraphs make sense as we go through. And the other sense of your mark scheme, the other side of your mark scheme is your spelling, punctuation, and grammar mark. Sentences are mostly secure and mostly accurate for level three. They are, of course, always accurate and always secure for level four mark. So please give yourself time to check those. A range of punctuation is used. Speech marks, commas, colons, brackets, apostrophes, full stop, exclamation mark, question mark. Please get a range in. Formal language is also used throughout. Paragraphing and sentences should be um, not just accurate, but varied in length. Some long, some short, some linking words. Um, to make sure that you're really um, varying and showing off your English language skills. Mostly accurate spelling, of course, level four, always accurate spelling. Also, a use of complex vocabulary, tricky spellings. Get them off the insert, get them into your work. As long as you're using them appropriately, it's absolutely fine. Okay, and then as we go through, just remember to do these things. Break down the question for the what and the how. Plan your response so it hits your mark scheme with a convincing argument, and a clear, accurate use of structural features and discourse markers so your argument doesn't go off track. And then as you're writing it, an accurate and formal use of SPAG. AQA recommend five minutes to plan, 35 minutes to write, five minutes to proofread your work afterwards. So try to allow that to happen. There's a lot of marks here. There's 40 marks at stake as a quarter of GCSE. Give it the respect that it deserves. Make sure that you've answered it accurately and convincingly and, and click carefully and clearly. You really know what you want to say and you say it well. Give yourself a proofread. Just check everything. Make sure you're happy with it. And then uh, just make sure that if you have any spare time left over. I wouldn't start adding to this. This should be a clear structure, not a rambling structure. You may want to go back and see if you can add more to question four where there's 16 marks at stake.